Thanks for checking out this video. For a full list of materials used in this project, head down to the description below and click on show more. This heart design has just a few simple ingredients that you're gonna need. I have my Lucite Vintage Flower Collection. And this is a collection of vintage looking or vintage inspired Lucite flower shapes. So I have this sort of fun like hibiscus. I have a kind of traditional like six petaled flower. We have these lovely um, drop shapes and there's a couple other shapes also included in this collection. So you're gonna get five different flower shapes, all different sizes. And I've just picked out these two shapes for this particular design because I think they are, um, they work the best with this size heart. But you can really use any of the, of any of the flowers that you want to. I also have a collection of these little check flowers here. And this collection is a collection of flower bead caps. Um, this is a collection of some warm colors. So I thought they went really well with my vintage Lucite collection. So this is all you're really gonna need is just a couple different flower beads. I also have some seed beads here and I just chose um, 11 -0 in gold because it goes with everything. And then I also of course have my heart wreath form, uh, and I'm calling it a wreath, but it's really just a form that um, has holes in it so that you can bead in and out of it, kind of using it like a, a base for embroidery. And you'll notice it has this adorable little charm in the center. This has, um, so the heart will come with this charm that you can just take out. And then if you want to, you can hang it at the bottom of your wreath for a design that uh, sort of cascades down. You can hang it in your window, hang it on a doorknob, um, use it as a decoration like that. So I'm gonna put this guy aside for now because I don't need him for the beading portion. And I'm just gonna get out my materials. I'm gonna get my thread and needle. I am using a size eight in the dragon thread because I want something a little bit thicker and stronger that's going to um, work well with all these larger beads that I have. So I'm just gonna get all my stuff out, get my thread needle, um, and then I will begin. I have my thread and needle here. I have um, my size eight thread. And like I said, I like using this thicker thread because I have bigger beads. So I'm not gonna use a really skinny thread. I wanna use something a little bit thicker um, that's gonna just hold these beads, these thicker beads or bigger beads a little bit better. Um, and it's just a little bit more in scale with the rest of my project. And I also have a size 10 needle here uh, just because that is going to work the best uh, for threading that size eight thread. Now at the end of my thread here, uh, like in most projects I do, I have a little stop bead here and I've just used one of my gold seed beads. I'm not gonna need this throughout the whole project, uh, but it's gonna help me initially so that when I go through my first hole, I don't take my thread all the way through. So I'm gonna begin here with just sort of picking a place where I wanna start on the heart. Because I'm not going to actually use all of the holes in the heart, I can really start anywhere. If you want to, um, before you begin, some people like to make sure that they know exactly what they're doing. Um, some people are a little bit more uh, chaotic and you know don't mind just kind of going with the flow. So if you want to lay it out and just kind of get an idea of where you want things, you can certainly go ahead and do that first and kind of get an order together. I am much more of a free form, sort of random, just kind of go where, it, you know, go where it takes me kind of person. Uh, so I'm gonna start here at the top right corner and I'm not going to lay out my design. <laughs> um, some of you are probably gonna scream at me right now, but I'm not going to because I like to see where it goes, just like a natural bouquet of flowers. So I'm just gonna take my thread, and again, I have that stop bead, um, a, uh, any kind of seed bead, a leavener or um, an 8 should 
stop that thread from going through the hole there just to make it easier for you uh, when you add your first beads. I'm going to start with one of these larger flowers. And so of course where you start, whatever hole you're coming through, that is where the center of your flower is going to be. So if you want to have the flower to the edge, you want to come through one of the edge holes here. If you want to have the flower in a little bit more, then of course you want to come to one of the uh, holes that's closest to the center here. I'm going to just have this guy centered, this flower centered on the top right. So I'm just going through one of my center holes here um, in this line of three holes here. I'm just coming through that and I'm going to pick up my pick up my hibiscus flower here. I'm not sure that this is a hibiscus flower, but it looks a little bit like it to me, so I'm going to call it hibiscus. And then I'm going to layer one of my check flowers. This is uh, Valentine's Day coming up, so if you're watching this video when it launches, we are in February, and so I'm kind of embracing the whole like love and pinks and purples, and I'm just going to go with this theme for this. Uh, I've layered it with this nice dark pink, and so you see when you start layering it, it really makes it pop, and I love the difference. I love the contrast here between the really shiny check glass with a little bit of that gold in there, and then you've got behind it, you've got this nice backdrop of a kind of semi-matte satin um, texture. So it really helps to complement each other and they kind of draw out the best in each other. That's what you want to find when you're layering things, things that are going to provide contrast or enhance the properties of the other piece. I'm going to pick up a little seed bead here and then I'm going to skip that seed bead and just go back down through both of those beads that I picked up, both of those flowers. So I'm coming out on the other side of my wreath form and that will hold my flowers in place. It's really lush. That's what I love so much about using these particular beads and colors and combinations together. Um, it really provides a nice, lush, layered look. So now you can, on the back side, repeat and do the same thing for a double-sided heart. Or if you want to, you can just, um, you, you don't have to do a double-sided look and you can cover this with you want with you if you want to um, with like an ultra backer um, or a piece of felt something like that but I'm going to go ahead and do this heart double-sided um, and so I'll just show you how I do that coming out on this back side here I'm going to use the same uh, the same sort of combination of flowers. So I'm going to repeat the same, the same combination. I'm going to grab one of my hibiscus flowers and then I'm going to layer that with one of my check flowers. I love the fullness of this and again just one of my little seed beads here. I can actually leave the seed bead on my needle because I'm just going to go back down through my through my flowers and through that hole, that same hole in the heart. So I've only used that one hole so far. And I'm going to come out through the other side uh, without going through the flower shapes on the other side. So just through the hole itself. And then you can just give that nice tight pull to just kind of get everything nice and tight together. So you can see I've added them on both sides. And so I'll have a mirror image on the front and the back. Uh, I do like using the different colors because as these beads spin, you'll see the pink behind this beautiful sort of ochre orange color. 
and same on this side, you'll see this beautiful ochre color behind the pink. So it really gives you the sense of a really full, uh, luscious sort of uh, bouquet. So now to move on and add more flowers, all I'm going to do is take my thread and decide about where I want to add that next flower. So on this side here, I actually really love this sagey color, and I think it's going to look really beautiful with my pink. So uh, if I want to position it about here, I'm going to use this hole here. So all I'm going to do is go through that hole, and you'll see now I'm coming out on the other side. So I'm going to begin on this side. And I'm going to choose a flower for this side, a flower in a color. I like this white. Uh, it's not really white. It's more of like a frosted crystal, which is really pretty. And again, just go through that heart or through that flower. And you just want to make sure that you're picking them up first starting going through the back side so that when you have them sit down against your heart, the, um, the right side, the front side is facing up. And if you do that incorrectly, you'll, you'll figure it out pr pretty quickly what you did. <laughs> uh, and again, I'm going to layer here. Uh, this is not enough contrast for me. I want something really bold. So I'm going to go with this pink color. Yeah, go with this pink color here. Yeah, that's, I love that. And again, just a seed bead so that when I take my thread through, I am going to hold everything in place. I'm not accidentally just undoing all my work. So pull that thread through and pull it tight. This is another reason why I like having the size eight thread. It's going to be just a little bit more stronger, just a little bit stronger, so that I can just give it a little extra tug here. And now I'm on the front side again, or there really is no front, but I'm back at the side where I first started. And I'm going to pick up my next bead, repeating those same steps, just picking that bead up. And I think for this one, maybe I'll do that is really lovely. I'll use this color here. It's got a nice golden touch finish to it. Now with these collections, um, they are uh, sort of a collection of uh, just some various colors that look nice together, that are in the same kind of theme. So when you get a collection, you know that you're gonna be able to use these colors together on a project like this. You don't have to worry that uh, you're, you're not going to be able to use them together. And again, just back through all those beads, coming out on the other side here. And I want to come out through the hole. Uh, I want to try to avoid going back through my flowers on the other side. If you do, then you can just go up and around down through that, down through the beads again. It's, it's just going to reinforce that. Uh, but I just prefer to not do that. Just get it on the first try there. <coughs> so there I, I have two so far added on there, two full sets of hearts. And you can see here, they're really fun how they spin. And it's going to be a really nice, um, really just kind of like a real nice natural bouquet of flowers is what I love so much about this. So I'm going to continue and add my lucite and check beads around the whole heart frame. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to fill in any little gaps where I still see that wood frame underneath and I don't want to. So go ahead here and continue adding your lucite flowers and your check flowers and then we will go ahead and fill in those gaps. I've made quite a bit of progress here on my heart, as you can see, but I want to leave this space here. This, uh, this for me, this is the top left section, 
And I want to leave this open for right now um, and free from these lucite flowers so I can concentrate on adding some of my smaller flowers. This will create contrast in the design as well as give me an opportunity to highlight the shape of the heart and not have the hard shape of the heart here, these hard outlines um, distorted at all by these beautiful flowers. So I like to create a little definition here, a little break in the design, and give the heart a chance to show its lovely shape. So here what I'm going to do is similar um, to what I've been doing, but I'm just going to move my focus from uh, adding the lucite, which are the larger flowers, to adding a series of the smaller flowers. And all I'm going to do here is the same step, same technique that I used previously. And I'm going to come through the hole in my heart, pick up just the smaller bead here, one little seed bead, and go back through that, that flower. Pull tight to make sure you don't have any slack. And if you do have some slack, just give it a little tug and pull, pull that tighter again. So what you'll see is that as I add these smaller hearts, or these smaller flowers along the edge here, it's gonna sit closer to the side of the heart and it's gonna give you more of that heart shape. So we have this beautiful illusion of a heart wreath and then I'm gonna add some definition here to really make it um, look like a heart and um, just give it a little bit more of that definition. So I'm gonna add some of my small flowers in here and then I'm gonna show you what that looks like. I've now finished adding the smaller flowers here to this corner, this top corner of my heart. And you can see how it really helps to give a little bit of that heart definition that is um, just going to make it that much more impactful as a heart. So I went ahead and cut off and um, I used my thread burner to burn down the thread that I was using. And I'm going to start with a new piece of thread. Um, partly because I was running out of thread and also partly because I want to move to a new section of the heart and it's just going to be easier to start with a new piece of thread. So now that I've finished that section, I'm going to start adding the smaller hearts here, the same ones that I was using for this section here, but I'm going to start using them uh, more sporadically throughout the design to help fill in some of those little gaps or and to really just to kind of put them underneath some of the lucite flowers to help give the lucite a little bit more structure, hold it into place better, um, make it a little firmer in the design. This will also give me an opportunity to go back through any of these lucite hearts that um, maybe I didn't get as tight as I wanted to the first time. So I'm going to start by uh, just adding my thread here by just going through a hole wherever I want to start. And I want my tail thread to be close to and on the same size as same side as the tail thread when I first began. And that will allow me to tie these together and then tie it off. So I'm going to hold both my tail threads together for a second here. I'm going to pick up my first, my first little bead here, my first flower, and using that same technique, just pick up a seed bead and go through the flower. And coming out the other side, again, we're just going to pick up a flower, let that fall down, pick up a seed bead, and go through, and go through our heart. Now before I go much farther here, what I want to do is take these two thread ends and you can take the stop bead off if you can. If you can't, that's okay too. You should be able to take that stop bead off by just getting it on your needle and pulling that off. So 
now this is just a matter of taking the two thread ends, tying them together, and doing a right over left and then a left over right knot. So that's a square knot. And you just want to tie them together. And this will be buried in your project. So at this point, I'm just going to um, leave them tied together. I'm not going to burn it down yet. I will wait to do that at the end. So now I want to make sure that I've got my design nice and tight here. Make sure my beads are nice and tight. And if you need to go back through them again, that's perfectly fine. There we go, pull that tight. And because this lucite sits a little bit up off of the, um, the beading surface here, the wood surface, you have the ability to kind of scoot in underneath it and really kind of play around with where you want these extra little beads. So I'm gonna go in here, just go one hole down. And again, I'm just adding these beads wherever there's a gap or there's um, not a lot of structure. And that will help add that definition again in the heart because I'm gonna be adding these beads along the edge of the heart. Coming out on this side here, and I'll pick up one of these beads. and let that go down. So these beads that I'm adding are really gonna sit underneath that lucite. Picking up my 11-0, going through. And then on the front side here, picking up a bead, my flower bead. Letting that fall down and letting it sit under the lucite and picking up my 11 0 So I'm gonna continue like this and just go all around the edge of the heart and I don't have to use all the holes, but any place where uh, it would be appropriate to put one of these beads. So I'm going around the edge. You can also go around the inside edge, really wherever you want to cover any of that wood. So I'm gonna continue with that and see what that looks like once I get all of my little flowers in. I finished adding any little beads, any of my little flowers um, around the larger lucite flowers and I've tucked them underneath. So you can see that they are just supporting the lucite flowers and providing some extra coverage of that wood form. And I only really needed it around here uh, once I got into this section here, the wood was pretty well covered and I was very happy with the design. So I only added where I needed to. So the very final thing we need to do, um, and I also cut off my thread, so I just brought my thread ends together, tied them off and um, used my thread burner to burn them down. So the very last thing that we need to do is decide how we want to hang this. You can, if you want to, um, before you finish the design, leave an open hole someplace where you'd want to add a bail. Um, I covered this whole thing up. So what I'm going to do here is find an open hole here where I can get to under the lucite flowers. And I'm going to create just a little loop with seed beads so that I can hang this at an angle. I kind of like the way that it looks hanging at an angle, and I think that would be really cute. So when you um, start your design, or as you're working with it, just keep in mind that if you do wanna add any sort of loop of seed beads as a bale, or you wanna add a metal bale, you just wanna keep in mind that you need to leave uh, a hole open if you choose to uh, attach it that way. So I have a new piece of thread here. And like I said, I wanted to um, hang this at an angle. So I'm just gonna go through one of my open holes here and twist this little lucite flower until it gives me a nice gap in the petals where I can push my needle through. I found that there's some, with the shape of these flowers, 
sometimes it gives me just a really nice gap there and allows me to push my, my thread through. Um, so I twist those flowers around until I find that, that sweet spot there. So now I just have my piece threaded or my thread um, through one of those holes there. And all I'm going to do is pick up a series of seed beads long enough to make the loop size that I want. So you're going to hold this extra tail thread. Uh, you can also put a stop bead on if you want. Uh, I'm just going to hold it here and just make sure that it doesn't pull all the way through. And I'm going to continue adding beads until I get to the length that I need to make a loop for whatever I'm going to use it for. So this is of course too small, I'm going to make it a little bit longer and then loop it around. So I'm going to continue adding beads here until I get to the length that I need. I've added just a few more beads here until it's about an inch and a half or two inches long. So that will make my loop when I bring it around on itself about the size that I may want for um, a number of different things that I might use it for. You want to have a good idea of what you want to use this bale for, of how you want to use your finished piece, just so that you know what size bale to make. And I'm just taking my thread and needle back through that hole and reinforcing that, pull tightly. And then I'll go back through this loop again and tie off my thread. So from here on out, just very similar to how you would do any other design, I'm just going to take my needle and thread back through my seed beads. And you don't, it's okay if they're not very tight at this point, because you have to kind of pick them up and work with them to get your needle and thread back through them. But as you work and pull through, tighten it all up. And then once you get through all the seed beads and back to the other side here, when our thread ends meet, we'll tie that off. And then I'll have a nice little loop there from which um, I can hang my piece. Uh, you can also use a ribbon, you can also use, um, you also don't have to include any sort of bale already attached. You can just simply create the wreath as is and then tie a beautiful piece of ribbon on it. So lots of ideas, lots of ways that you can use this um, and hang this around your house. If you enjoyed this video, please comment below and let us know your thoughts. You can also subscribe to our channel to be notified as soon as we have more beading tutorials out that you'll enjoy probably just as much as you enjoyed this one.